He was a Khalif for ten and a half years. His Islam spread as far as Pakistan, next to Makran, which is next to Karachi. Umar who said four days before he passed away, he said, he said to Hudayfa he said, I swear by Allah, if Allah gives me life until next year, no, Muslim, no woman in the Muslim world will need any man besides Umar ibn Khattab. I will provide for every single one of them. Umar said that I will ensure that the Bedouins in the mountains of Yemen will attain their allowance. Umar started what is called child benefit. Look, Umar was the most powerful man on the face of this earth, but he was a khadim. He served other people. The narrations mention that a group of travelers came into Medina, and Umar told Abdurrahman ibn Auf, I said, Abdurrahman, let's go and look after these people, they're travelers. Let me tell you who Abdurrahman ibn Auf was. Abdurrahman ibn Auf was one of the ten who was guaranteed Jannah by the Prophet. He was a multi millionaire. Out of the Sahaba, him and Uthman were the most richest two. Who did, who did he say to? He said, Abdurrahman, let's go and look after these people. A multi millionaire. All night they looked after these people. And amongst them, there was this woman with a child whose child kept on crying. So Umar came up to her and he said, You know, make your child stop crying. So she tried. Later on, the child stood crying. And Umar went back to her and he said, What an evil mother you are. All night your child has been crying. You've done nothing. So she didn't know that this was Umar Amir al Mu'mineen. So she said, the reason, I'm, the reason the child is crying is that I'm trying to wean him off. Because Umar, she's speaking to Umar, she doesn't know this is Umar. She said, because Umar Amir al Mu'mineen has said that every child in the Muslim world who stopped breastfeeding has an allowance. So Umar asked her, how old is your child? And she said, he's this, and she, he said, don't hurry, don't hasten to wean him off. And then this man, the most powerful man from serving the people at night, went and he stood on the musalla, the sajada, the prayer mat. And he led the prayer. And Abdurrahman ibn Auf says, I swear by Allah, I could not understand what Umar was reciting in the Fajr prayer because he was crying so much. And then after the prayer finished, Umar turned around. He turned around and he, and he, and he said, Woe unto you, Umar. Speaking to himself. He said, Woe unto you, Umar. How many children have you killed because of your rule? And then he made it an allowance for every single child that is born in the Muslim world that he be given child benefit. Umar anhu had every person who could not work in the Muslim world had an allowance. He had care for people he knew like Sayyidina Yarbu who were blind. He had carers for them. Omar walked past a group of Christians who had leprosy and, he couldn't, and, and they, had no, they had nobody to look after them. So Omar took money out of the Baytul Mal and he spent upon their medicine. He spent upon their medicine. And those who were not cured, Umar spent until, upon them until the allowance, until the day that they died. Umar saw a Jewish man, he was begging. And Umar called the governor and he said, Why is this man begging all his life? He has paid his, he has paid his jizya, he has paid his taxes, and now he can no longer earn himself, he has to beg. Now this was what the Muslims achieved in a period of ten and a half years because the Muslims had a vision. In the time of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, one, one Muslim prisoner was humiliated in the Byzantine lands and the news reached Umar ibn Abdul Aziz and Umar ibn Abdul Aziz wrote a letter to the governor and he said, before you place this letter down, free that Muslim prisoner for by Allah, I will send an army which begins here and ends where you are. In the time of Muhtasim, one Muslim lady was slapped in the Byzantine land and she cried out, Wa Muhtasima! And the Romans began to laugh and they said, Why are you calling Muhtasim? He's thousands of miles away. You think he's going to jump on his black and white horse and come and save you? And the news reached Muhtasim. The news reached Muhtasim. And Muhtasim sent an entire army, 
for the izza of one Muslim lady. And he told every single one of them, he said, each one of you climb and when you go, go on a black and white horse. And you look, and you look, and you look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turns the table. Oh Allah, one Israeli soldier gets kidnapped who by international law is upholding an illegal occupation. And the Israelis follow the sunnah of Muqtasim and they send the entire army. They send the entire army. But the difference between their army and Muqtasim's army is that Muqtasim's army didn't terrorize women and children. They didn't knock out electricity plants. They didn't terrorize innocent women and children. And the ulama and the fuqaha, they chose Salahuddin Rahmatullah alayhi as, as in the place of shirku. And therefore Salahuddin Rahmatullah alayhi became the second most powerful man in Egypt. He was only 32 at the time. Same, it is record, recorded by Jabir radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu never said no to somebody who asked him for something. And the historians mention that Salahuddin Rahmatullah alayhi never in his life did he turn away a beggar. They mentioned that never in his life, listen to this, never in his life did he ride a horse, but he had already promised to give it to somebody else. And they mentioned that Salahuddin Rahmatullah alayhi would very rarely laugh, smile. And somebody asked him, you know, you're the king of Egypt, Syria, Yemen, Lebanon. You'd very rarely smile. He had everything. And Salahuddin Rahmatullah alayhi said, how can I smile? How can I smile? How can food and water taste good to me when Bayt al Maqdis is in the hands of the Crusaders? I wonder what Salahuddin would say if he was here today. I wonder what he would say about the Muslims and their apathy towards the Holy Lands today. And the astrologers had told Salahuddin, they said, Oh Salahuddin, we have seen in the stars that if you try to take Jerusalem, you will lose an eye. And Salahuddin said, you talking about me losing an eye? I swear by Allah, I will take the holy lands, even if it means I walk into Jerusalem blind. And then Salahuddin Rahmatullah walked up to Reginald and he reminded him of his transgressions. And he reminded him of what he said about the Prophet Wasallam. And Reginald said that this is what kings have always been doing. And Salahuddin offered him Islam. And he refused. And then Salahuddin said, Do you know who I am? He said, I am the representative of the Prophet. And I, on this world, take revenge on behalf of the Prophet. That when Salahuddin came into Jerusalem, he showed the Christians the meaning of compassion. The Muslim king showed the Christian the meaning of compassion. And Imam Dhahbi says something profound here. He says this was the greatest victory for the Muslims since in Sham, since Khalid bin Walid defeated the Romans at the Battle of Yarmouk. 